Hello, biology students. Uh, so this is Mr. Ackert, uh, going to go over uh, cladograms a little more in depth um, and just add a few things to what Mr. Anderson had said. So I have a cladogram here um, that you may more likely see on uh, the end of course exam. Uh, so what I have here is this is a plant cladogram. So this is showing the evolution uh, and the relatedness of the different types of plants. So um, it is important to understand that when we think of age, um, now your cladograms you see may not have the years on it, um, but it is important to understand that you can generally uh, think of cladograms as they don't always necessarily work left to right, um, but what you really want to do is you want to look for um, when you see the cladogram, if it kind of looks like this, and then there are clads coming off. And so what they actually consider is these branches coming off, those are called clads. And the end that doesn't have anything like attached to it, that's the oldest. So I can tell down here that this portion right here, this is the oldest region here because nothing is, this is like so showing further back in time, there would have been another organisms. Now it's also to under, important to understand at least the concept that the first group that branches off is often thought to be the out group. Um, this is the group that doesn't share any characteristics with any of the other organisms that are on here. And those in this cladogram, we have a couple things that have been added. They, they've added some characteristics. So what this is telling us that this cuticle and cuticle, what that actually is, is, is um, on the leaves, it's actually a waxy substance on the outside of the leaves. Algae don't have those because that trait evolved after algae branched off the common ancestor. It's also important to understand that every time something branched off, there was a common ancestor. So right here, there was a liverworts and every other organism on here had a common ancestor. There are lots and lots of things on here that are gone, that have, ex that have gone extinct. But every time something branches off, that's sort of like another lineage or another line of organisms. And so they would have had a common ancestor. This one does have a few dates listed, so we can actually tell that at about 300 million years, and MYA actually stands for a million years ago. If we see BYA, that's billion years ago. So at 300 million, about 300 million years ago, based on fossil evidence, the gymnosperms evolved. And so how do I know those are gymnosperms? Because there are actually some traits up here that are listed. And so this little bracket right here is indicating that these three organisms, cycads, ginkgos, and conifers, are all gymnosperms. And then, so those gymnosperms branched off, and these were going to be ones that um, are going to be coned plants. And so you see cones as this characteristic. So everything on this clad would have cones. Then the other plants that evolved, and, and there are still around, it's important to understand there are still ferns around today, and there's still lycopods and still horsetails, and there's still liverworts and mosses. But they've, they, at this point, the, the more advanced plants evolved after those. And so um, there would be little branches that could come off of here. And you might say, well, are we still doing evolution? Well, we've been around for such a short period of time documenting this that in the last uh, of, of human existence, we haven't really seen any necessarily new, new, new forms of plants form. However, we do see new forms of bacteria and viruses form all the time. So in that standpoint, we are seeing evolution happening. Uh, for instance, as we see coronaviruses, different variants form, that is a form of mutations which lead to evolution. And that is really a key idea is that mutations lead to these new traits. And I've, I've really harped on that a lot, though, mutations lead to new traits. So on this common ancestor, all of the gymnosperms branched off from the other plants that would become angiosperms. And so these traits along here tell us what characteristics the organisms have. So if I take, for instance, if I take, um, let's take our horsetails here, which characteristics do they have? Well, they have a cuticle. In fact, down here, they, they, are, they are multicellular. They have cuticles. They have xylem and phloem. And then they branched off. And so they don't have woody tissue because that evolved, that characteristic evolved after the horsetails. Horsetails you sometimes see, these are like little, uh, uh, they, they, uh, you've seen these, uh, oh gosh, all of a sudden I've forgotten, um, they grow a little like, like swampy areas and things like that. They have the, like the little shoot that comes up to almost like a hot dog on the end that looks like a um, cattail, something called cattails are kind of related to that. All right, um, and so we see that the most recent evolution of the most recent organisms are these angiosperms on the end. And so at some point, perhaps there'll be another group that will, you know, if we come back in another, you know, 10 million years or some sort of an event that occurs, we could see additional evolution.
I just want to also point out that these brackets up here would like, so for land plants, this is actually all of the evolution of all land plants. Then we have vascular plants. Those are the ones that have the xylem and phloem. Um, so just thinking about how these things actually work. And so those traits, if, if, it, if the trait is after the clad breaks off, we don't have that characteristic. Okay, so hopefully that kind of under, that helps. And so um, we can sometimes make a checklist of the terms that, that, that exist. Um, and we can also tell the years that say perhaps a break off. So we could actually talk about, you know, which are more uh, distant in our evolution, evolved more distantly, mosses or lycopods. And we see those mosses did because those are further back. All right, hopefully that helps orient you a little bit to these cladograms and help you answer the rest of the questions in this Quizlet. Thanks for listening.